Okay. Good afternoon to everybody from uh, Lefkos Stavros, from Athens, uh, Greece. I would like to welcome everyone to our fourth live transmission that uh, we're having here. Sorry also about a little delay, but we had some technical problems. Anyway, we are um, ready now to start. Uh, the second thing I want to say, by the way, I'm George Pistofidis. I am uh, one of your presenters. Uh, I will introduce you the surgeons today. Uh, the main surgeon uh, is uh, Professor Costas Lathuras, who is a lecturer at the Imperial College in England, and he will perform the operation today, and his assistant is Stelios Kogiorgos, uh, who's been editing all the videos until now, and you probably know him very well. Uh, the second thing I wanted to say is originally we had planned to carry out a pelvic uh, lymphadenectomy with a total hysterectomy uh, for a woman with clear cell endometrial carcinoma, but that's been now replaced due to COVID infection. Unfortunately, we still live in the middle of this pandemic. And today's case that we replaced is a young woman that Dr. Lathuras uh, is going to tell you more in detail about her. And uh, she's having a total hysterectomy with uh, extensive pelvic lymphadenectomy. So I will pass on the uh, microphone to uh, S Professor Costas Lathuras, and he will carry on with the description of his procedure. Hello everyone, welcome to our fourth live transmission, Safe Laparoscopy. My name is Costas Lathuras and I'm a gynae oncologist. The team today is uh, Stelios Kogiorgos, a consultant gynecologist. Tasos Pandraklakis, who is a specialty trainee in Ops and Gynae our second assistant, and Anna, our scrub nurse, and Dr. Kostas Dimitropoulos, who is our anesthetist, and the whole team here. Thank you, Professor Pistofidis, for uh, having us here and uh, at Lefkos Stavros and uh, performing this uh, operation. This is a, a case of a 26-year-old woman with a endometrial cancer that she presented uh, six months ago with uh, radiological stage 1a grade 1 endometrial cancer and we try to treat her uh, conservatively she had high dose of medroxyprogesterone and uh, marina intrauterine device this uh, on the three monthly follow-up she, ha she still had uh, grade one endometrial cancer, but um, the tumor didn't uh, respond very well. On the sixth month follow-up, she instead of uh, the tumor became uh, grade two to three, so we decided to go ahead with a total hysterectomy, bilateral salbicophorectomy, pelvic and paraortic lymphadenectomy patient doesn't want to have a paraortic lymphadenectomy, so we will proceed only with systematic pelvic lymphadenectomy. First of all, we're going to develop our spaces, our, uh, with the help of uh, our uh, instruments. The whole procedure is, s we're very privileged to be sponsored towards me, please, thank you. First of all, we're going to develop our spaces we're going to develop our lateral, uh, the, we're going to develop the pelvic wall and our lateral paravesical and pararectal spaces. We're using Herbe Bipolar Forceps to a VIO3 generator, which is a very efficient energy source that safely coagulates 
all vessels up to three, four millimeters with a very low lateral thermal spread. First of all, when we perform a laparoscopy, we must uh, be very thorough about the what we call setup. We need to have the patient and uh, in a very in the right position, and we need to. have a great anesthesia in order to perform this kind of operation. As you can see, see here, I'm going to operate, I'm going to develop the obturator fossa. Here is the round ligament, the right round ligament. Stages, you can cut the round ligament. And here, you have the external iliac artery and external iliac vein. The space is between, the obturator space is between the umbilical artery, the obliterated umbilical artery, and, and the vessels. This is the paravesical space that has two compartments, the lateral one between the umbilical, obliterated umbilical artery, and the vessels and the external iliac vessels. You can see how the CO2 can develop our spaces, and you can see here the, here the obturator vessels. And someone can come lower down here and go down to the pelvic floor where We can found even the levator ani. Here you can see the obturator vessels and the nerve here going to the obturator foramen. Medial to the umbilical artery, you can find the medial compartment that is not necessary to dissect at this point because we're not doing a radical hysterectomy. Coming backwards. going close to the vessels and here we can see the ureter and again when we do a systematic pelvic lymphadenectomy there is no need to dissect the ureter from the posterior aspect of the broad ligament as there is no reason for radicality at this point and at this stage of cancer. Once we develop the spaces, we will be ready later to come and perform the lymphadenectomy on the right side and remove all the lymph nodes that are parallel. As you can see here, this is a lymph node, for example, parallel to the vessels. Okay. We're going to develop now our the left space. Where are ligament? The patient had a congenital hernia, as you can see. Here we developed a bit, we removed the normal, the normal adhesions of the sigmoid to the peritoneum, and the trick always here is 
to divide those adhesions, but don't open, uh, there is no need to open the retroperitoneal space. We can see here the IP ligament, which is the left gonadal artery, the left uh, gonadal veins. The left gonadal artery is coming, and the right are coming from the abdominal aorta. We can just throw our ligament, that's fine. Just to test the gill. Here we are opening the broad ligament on the pelvic side wall, going towards the round ligament. And you can see here the exposed external left external artery and below is the vein. And here you can see the round ligament. Just umbilical. Like that now will happen with the umbilical artery here. And again, here the same side, the same step, the CO, the CO2 is doing the job for us and we develop our obturator foramen. You can see here the pelvic rim, which is the pectineal ligament, which is our caudal limit of uh, lymph node dissection. Part of the cycle fossa is limited by the umbilical ligament medially and the vessels laterally. You can see here the nerve, the obturator nerve here, and how we can go below. Come here with the camera. and develop all our spaces down to the pelvic floor and the levator ani muscles. There is no need to do a pelvic lymphadenectomy below the level of the obturator. nerve. You can see here how important is for laparoscopy. One of the most important thing, one of the most important things is the vision. We cannot do a laparoscopy without vision. So hemostasis is a great advantage with this bipolar forceps and this is how we keep our surgical field as appropriate as we can. Here you can see again the ureter. You can see those are basic steps throughout an operation like this that allow us to be secure, safe, and efficient. This is the continuation of the umbilical artery here, and this most probably is the uterine artery. On a bulky uterus, unfortunately, the you can see here how the uterine artery is, is dividing here, and this is how we perform also radical
hysterectomy by ligating those vessels in the uterine vein underneath. Okay? There is no need to divide it here in this endometrial cancer, but I can coagulate it just to reduce the blood supply. And you can see here all the, all the lymph nodes, all the lymphatic tissue on the left side. Th those are the lymph nodes. Those are the lymphatic vessels, and those are the lymph nodes circulating around the vessels. As you can see here again, this is the obturator foramen. This is the level. This is the nerve here, and this is the level where we have to stop our uh, palliative lymphadenectomy. Let me see here the bifurcation stages. You can get common grass to peritoneum on this side. You can see how the ureter is crossing here. On the left side, the left common iliac artery, and you can see here the bifurcation of the left common iliac artery to the external iliac artery and the internal iliac artery, and the external vein, iliac vein, is coming here. While on the right side, most of the time, the right ureter is crossing here the right external artery. You can see here the ureter on this side. This is the external iliac artery. Okay, and the ureter. Let me do so. We'll continue now with the hysterectomy. We have a uterine manipulator. The, the tassos is managing very well, and uh, at the end we will do the hysterectomy. Following that, following the hysterectomy, we will put what we call a McCartney tube and we will do the. Let's clean the camera for a minute. Someone can do the lymphadenectomy first and uh, the hysterectomy later. This is uh, how, for example, I'm doing uh, at cervical cancer, now in endometrial cancer. I will uh, do the hysterectomy, and uh, at the end, we will uh, we will do the lymphadenectomy. Tasso, can you please push towards patient's head? I'm going to open the anterior part of the broad ligament. We, we only need to do the peritoneum here and nothing else. Let me see here. Thank you. Okay. Had a lot of uh, discussion with this patient in order to conserve the ovaries or not. You can see here, this is the posterior leaf of the broad ligament. The ureter is right there. Okay. Patient uh, doesn't want to keep her ovaries to reduce any risk of. Uh, endometrioid or ovarian cancer. This is the posterior leaf of the broad ligament and the window that we safely open. Mm -hmm. Prior to 
before we started the treatment with uh, medroxy, medroxyprogesterone had an um, egg stimulation and egg and collection of eggs in order to use a surrogate in the future for any fertility treatment. She put a uh, priority in her life and uh, this is a decision that uh, I totally encourage. You can see how safely this bisecting bipolar forceps This is for the back flow. This is the coagulation and division of the left gonadal artery, which is the branch of the aorta and the left two right ovarian, I'm sorry, right ovarian artery and two right ovarian veins. The veins unite to one and going directly to the inferior vena cava. Safely with the ureter, even in our vision, we can go and dissect further the posterior leaf of the brown ligament. And you can see how nice, he how nice here the uterine, the curved uterine artery is demonstrated. You can even come here and coagulate like this, like that, and that will be safe. But uh, when you skeletonize the vessels, is always uh, safer, and you know where to go when you have a problem. And you bipolar less tissue, like here, without interruption of any hard peritoneal tissue. Just demonstrating here some and you can see how safely it is when we do this. Yeah, very nice. Good. Let's go on the other side. Thank you, thank you with the round ligament. To towards, uh, towards the other side, uh, also towards Telios. Thank you. You can see how nice here, you can see the IP from this side and the ureter, ureter from this side. So this is the window here. This is the posterior leaf of the broad ligament that someone needs to open and safely coagulate and divide the IP away from the ureter. You see how the ureter is going down here, okay? Come and hold for a minute. The peritoneum. Simply, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
those are very, apart from the cancer, those are very healthy and strong tissues. Usually we don't operate on 26-year-old uh, women with endometrial cancer. Usually the tissues are more friable as endometrial cancer is part of, um, it comes at the later stage of life. You can see here the left IP has the gonadal artery, comes from the aorta and the two left ovarian veins going straight as one to the left renal vein. When I coagulate the tissues, stereos is relaxing a bit, so this is how you achieve excellent coagulation, not by stretching the tissues. Very nice. Again here, I will do the same thing. Stadio, you can take this and you can take the round ligament. Thank you. It's the left round ligament. Well done. and open the posterior lip of the broad ligament towards the uterus sacral fold. Let's clean the camera for a minute. Those are the uterine vessels on the left side. This is a very fine plane that someone needs to find. I'm telling you again, you can't you can do it without finding this plane. But it's absolutely safe if you do it and it gives you a lot of uh, extra tissues and knowledge when you do this kind of procedure in order to manage any complication or any bleeding. I'm opening now the anterior, a vascular anterior plane of the broad ligament towards the bladder. Okay, let's do the uterovesical fold now in the bladder. Yeah, you can see here the catheter, the edge of the catheter. First, when we do the uterus, just press the uterus down like this. You can see it's a This is the peritoneum of the bladder and the utero vesical fold. We can cut the peritoneum at the level of uh, where the the level of the cervix or at the isthmus. The trick here is, uh, thank you, Stegos. Stretch. Pass on, push inside. Thank you. Here. Here is the cervix uh, beneath my harmonic scalpel.
You can see how excellent the system they have bought from Tassos, who is pushing the uterus. So I can work on top of the cervix. Nastasios, who is one of the best uh, gynecologists and laparoscopic surgeons in Greece. The trick here is, apart from uh, holding only the peritoneum like this, is to hold the bladder itself. Push, push a bit more down here. It's a bit sticky down here, but you can dissect a bit, and we'll see. Also, you can feel me here. This is the cervix. I think I went too low anyway. Okay, let's see it on the other side and we'll see. Let's come on the right side, towards me, Tasso. Push towards me. Yeah, like this, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now it's time that we can do the uterine uh, artery, which is here, okay? And the bladder is very low down. This is the cervix. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold it like this. And you see how nice the ureter is far away from our field. In 1989, they started doing their hysterectomies, and until 1993, that uterine manipulators were used in uh, clinical practice. All those steps were done by stitches. Now we know that the ureter is going down there, going below here, and the bladder is here. So it's going like this. Even if you don't see it, you know where it is once you do your window. And the uterine artery is coming like this coming here and bifurcates downwards giving the descending branch of the uterine artery towards the cervix and the ascending branch so at the moment we coagulate somewhere yeah give me a bit yeah that's it perfect 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 we coagulate at the level of the bifurcation and probably more at the ascending branch of the uterine artery because the manipulator, the uterine manipulator, made this step safer because it increases the distance of our coagulation and division of the uterine artery to the ureter of approximately 2.5 centimeters, which is about an inch. We'll do some calculation here for the backflow. And here we're going to divide the uterine artery. As you can see, I have my bipolar forceps here ready to coagulate any small vessel on any bleeding, so to try to make this procedure as hemostatic, as bloodless as I can. Not because any bleeding is significant at this stage, but because uh, you don't want blood on your surgical field and especially on the laparoscopy because it blurs your vision and especially in laparoscopy, red absorbs the light. So you can see how far away from the paracervical tissue the uterine is 
and here is all the level of our colpotomy. Someone thinks I'm bored. This is how I prepare the step for my for my colpotomy. Okay, let's go on the other side. You can see here the vessels. see how big are those vessels and now we skeletonize it and uh, may I have a section please yes. may I have a section section on our office we just took the section to absorb the smoke so I can make it can make this step more clear. You can see how the vessels shrunk. You don't you want to use water with a suction because those again, especially for bisecting uh, retroperitoneal spaces, it's all in the tissues. So there is no need to use water to rinse. But it's very efficient to use uh, the suction to. Just get in the trocar, inside the trocar. Thank you. Sorry. And you can see here those steps, and here you can see other vessels that we can shrink. Okay. Very nice. Just let's clean it for a minute. It's all about being prepared and uh, being safe when you do a laparoscopic procedure. You can see again here, this is the ascending branch of our uh, uterine artery. You can see here the ureter on this side, here, the uterine artery that I coagulated here, the, the obliterated umbilical artery, which is the continuation of the internal iliac artery. Please. I'm going to divide the left uterine artery just like this. Okay, good, good, good. And this is how I coagulate and dissecting the left uterine artery away 
on my cold bottom area. Now it's safely good. Now we can use the McCartney tube to perform our colpotomy. You can see the change of the color. We're going to place the McCartney tube inside the vagina. McCartney tube has two sizes, 35 and 45. The size of the McCartney tube is being uh, We choose the size according to the vagina size. So this is a, we're going to use a 45 McCartney tube to perform a colpotomy. Give it the go here. No, some little bit of You can see here some small bleeding. We can safely good coagulated so you can see how far the bladder is and with the McCartney tube we can even Boost us a bit. Very nice. And this is how Stelio. And this is how we're starting doing the anterior colpotomy. Tasos and I will rotate the McCartney tube 180 degrees to start doing the side of the colpotomy and uh, you can see here the uterine artery divided and we need to go above it and not below it. Here. Good, 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 good. This is our posterior colpotomy. Tasso, lift your hand up a bit. And this is the posterior colpotomy. go from this side all the way that you can see ok 
can see here the parts of Douglas, the left uterine sac and the right uterine sac and folds, and the right and left uterine sac and folds. And at this level, we can change hands. Avris, you have to find uh, Kevin Avris. Uh -huh. We are allowed to have some smoke, it's a live transmission. It's not an edited video. Let's clean the camera to see how we finish the colpotomy. Very nice in instrument because you have, uh, you can see the limit of your uh, tasso. You can move backwards a bit. You can see your incision. You can safely do the incision, and uh, it seals the air, so you don't lose air from your from your colpotomy. And in addition to that, you will remove the specimens through the McCartney tube. So we'll really So here, give me the bipolar forceps for a minute. Stay, stay still. Send me here. Now we're going to remove the specimen from the from down below. One of those is here. Also, take another one and. Uh, Careful with the camera. Get ready to put the McCartney tube again inside. I will remove the uterus from down below. Mm -hmm. Well done. Stay there. And now, again, with the McCartney tube, you don't lose your pneumoperitoneum. Okay. We'll continue now with the lymphadenectomy. We can start from the left side. Give me, please, um, give me, um, And let's clean the camera. Polyor, <coughs> yeah, give me a suction here, bipolar. Bipolar and suction. And suction. Suction, suction, suction. So I'm here. Give me a 
hermanos. So we have some bleeding here, and you see you grasp the tissues, you stretch the tissues, and this is how you find any vessel and coagulate any vessel if there is need to. Those are small bleeders that eventually will stop. Some water, please. Really need some water. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good, thank you. So let's start now with the lymph nodes. Let us have a few more so we will see. And yeah. Now we will continue with the lymphadenectomy. We will start on the left side. This is our, uh, this is here the upper limit, the bifurcation here. Stages will grasp this, the peritoneum. And here is the upper limit of our, uh, you can see here the lymph nodes. You can see this lymph node. gonna try to preserve it. This is the genitofemoral nerve. It shows muscle and genitofemoral nerve. So we have to leave the fascia behind. So usually what uh, I do is uh, trying to do an end block systematic lymphadenectomy. We dissect the tissues between the Actually, the genitofemoral of femoral nerve and the vessels. This patient is very kind to us. So those are the those are the lymphatics here on the vessel. Everything lateral to the genitofemoral nerve is not lymphatic tissue. We just saw what Steyer did last. Uh, That's the circumflex vein, which is going upwards. Here, this is the circumflex. This is the vein, the external vein. This is the circumflex. And the corona mortis will be down here when we come down to the... to the pectinous muscle here. We'll find it somewhere here in a minute. This 
little bit here. So the trick here is uh, we have to dissect all the lymph nodes away from the vessels. And to do that, we need to separate the lymphatic tissues. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the answer is that uh, usually, unless if it is necessary, we don't need to use the irrigation during the procedure because it uh, makes edema, it swollens the tissues and makes our plane very swollen in order to dissect fine tissues, such as the ureters or the nerves. So if we can avoid it, then... Uh, Come, come closer, gently. That's the only, it's not wrong to use it. She has very fine tissues, so. Cast flows here like this. The lymphatics, yeah. Here the lymphatics have some perforated vessels. You bleed some time, so that's why I'm coagulating those. Very, very close. And that's the trick also to separate of the adventitia of the vein and leave the fascia of the muscle. This is the vascular plane, as you can see. Exactly. You can see the nerve from this side also. Yeah? See the obturator nerve. Okay. So now? She doesn't have a lot of lymph nodes. Let it. The trick when we strip uh, the lymphatics from the vessels is to strip the adventitia of the vessels. And this is how you go to the avascular plane. Maybe you can grab there. there, very nice. Don't pull it that hard, just a bit less hard. Very nice, thank you. Come here for a minute. Okay, let it down for a minute. So we remove the lymph nodes from the artery, and we're gonna try to separate the lymph nodes. Come closer, please, from the vein. The vein is, uh, you have to take care of the vein because uh, 
the vein is uh, not like the artery is a bit collapsed here is a fine plane here for a minute take the peritoneum with the ureter, no 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 take the peritoneum lower down, yeah that's it perfect, perfect This is how you steer the adventitia from the vein. And you can see how safely it is away from the ureter, away from the internal iliac, the external iliac. We have only the vein. Very nice. Thank you. Remove also relax a bit. Relax a little bit. That's it. Now we're going to let it down for a minute. Take this. Now we're going to remove the lymph nodes of the from the veins, from the vein and the artery. You see here. And we're going to take the lymph nodes now from the obturator fossa. The tissues are very strong. Usually are not that strong. But you see here. Some are here. Here is a, another another trick. Tricky here is where the ureter is coming, the external iliac artery is coming here. The circumflex is coming. This is the circumflex vein coming here. And the here is the external iliac vein going to become the femoral vein. And here you have the. I'll show you now the pelvic. Uh, The pelvic rim, this is the pelvic rim, okay. And somewhere here is, uh, might be a very, no, 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 hold it like this. <coughs> Holding it perfectly, that's it. Here it is, here is the nerve, and the foramen is here, the obturator foramen, at the tip of my bipolar. So here is, uh, sometimes <coughs> it's big, sometimes it's small, the, what we call corona mortis. 
and there's no it's only the anastomosis of uh, a vein anastomosis of uh, the right the between here it is here it is I think that's it between the external iliac vein and the obturator vein The problem with uh, this is if it is big or if you don't see it, if you have any bleeding here, that uh, you can't control it. But uh, it's absolutely fine to coagulate and divide it. And you can see by doing this how this is the foramen here and the nerve. Okay. Uh, those are the obturator lymph nodes. Parta, parta. I'm gonna clean my. Uh, mm -hmm. And here we can strip, this is the level of our And this is all our lymphatics. Take the peritoneum away so we can see the ureter. You see how the ureter it is here? we can strip the whole lymph nodes like this and we can put it tasosomy and those are the lymph nodes the left pelvic lymph nodes may I have a small saw please azula the azula can have all the tons and this is how this is how we do on the left side and you can see here the anatomy, you can see the, the nerve here coming like this. You can see the here the superior gluteal vein. Here is the internal iliac artery that gives the first branch to the superior gluteal artery, which is here, and the inferior gluteal artery, which is somewhere down here, and then it gives the uterine artery here that I coagulated. And you can see how safe is away from the ureter, okay? I have my small soap. Tasso, now you can, in just a minute. Tasso, you can uh, remove, just a minute, just a minute. I'm gonna put a small, small soap here for some hemostasis. Usually we don't need to coagulate or do anything here, just leave a swab and we'll do the job. Yeah, now we're gonna remove the lymph nodes and we'll go to the right side. Now we're gonna do the right side. And if there are no complications, we're gonna finish this uh, procedure. Same thing here. Here you can see the psoas, the lateral iliocutaneous nerves, and the genitofemoral nerve here. Take the peritoneum like this. You can see the ureter on this side. And this is our cephalad part of our dissection.
again I'm telling you it's very you have to leave the fascia on the muscle sometimes it's not easy like here but we can do it Stadios now is going to help me and towards you. Excuse me, there's another question from the audience in the lobby. Yeah. Can we know the port of the arrangement? Yeah, the arrangement, we have one umbilical port, which is a 11 millimeter umbilical port. And three five millimeter port below the umbilicus, one on the left side, one in the midline. And uh, one on the right side. You can see here the genital femoral nerve. Again, here we will find the circumflex vein. You can see it here. Those are the lymphatics and the lymph node here. One other trick is try not to hold the lymph nodes themselves, but the tissue around the lymph nodes because they are friable and they bleed. Come like this, stay there here. Very nice. You can see the circumflex and the artery here. So not the lymph node, but the tissues around the lymph node. You can see the lymph nodes here, let me see here too. Yeah. You can see the lymph node here, yeah, yeah, big node. Another trick at this level, when the external is becoming the femoral is that here under very close to the artery, the vein is coming like this. Is this the nerve being attached to uh, No, I think it's a lymphatic because the genital femoral is here. So I think it's a lymphatic sometimes. You can see those lymphatics are. Uh, you can see the artery here becoming the femoral, here in the vein, just collapsing. Here is the corona mortis, here it is. The, con the communication between the iliac, external iliac vein at the level of the femoral and the obturator vein. I'll leave this here for a minute, continue here. Just hold this like this. The peritoneum, yeah. See the you see the circumflex vein, here is the external iliac artery, and how we dissect away the lymph nodes from the vein. Here I go 
take those lymphatics towards you. Here. Here is the lymphatics. No, no, the lymphatics. Uh, stelia. Take the lymphatics. Uh huh. Very nice. Very nice. And towards you, pull towards you. the lymph node, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Put it here. Tasso, give me your uh, academy tip. This is a lymph node. Good. This is a very sticky lymph node, okay. And now we're gonna do the same thing here, just push against the muscle. Rotate it, yeah, that's it. Just hold it there, yeah. Just hold it there, very nice. You see those perforating branches that I was telling you? Out like this. You see, here is the fascia of the muscle. It's very easy to go in here and not here. But here is the vascular plane, and here is the right plane. Here, this is how I coagulate this. This is, uh, I will stop here for a minute to tell you how important it is to have the right instruments. Because if, for example, you have a loss of insulation in this instrument and I press my energy, then if the energy is going from here to the vessels, then I can easily, in order to try and do hemostasis here, I can easily transmit energy to the vein or the artery and then have a so you have to use the right instruments and uh, fortunately those Erbe bipolar forceps are uh, one of the best instruments to coagulate and uh, so far they are very well insulated. Here is the Levato Rani, the Pugo. And those, if you go down here, for example, I'm going to show you just a minute. You can even see here, here, down here. This is the root of the ischial nerve here. Some white tissues here. Okay. Let's carry on with the lymphadenectomy. Come closer a bit. This is the vein collapsed, but you have to strip that venticia in order to be on the right. You see? Come here. Mm -hmm.
it's over here, I think. This will be our kefalat fart. And you see here, yeah, hold it just gently, just lie upon them. Very nice. Here you can see the lymph node. Very nice. Very, very nice. You see the ureter on this side and the vessel. And this is how we end the cephalid part of uh, dissection. Hold a bit here, Esteban. Yeah. And this is what it remained on the vein. Let me take this out. Okay. This is the lymphatics remained on the external vein. I will try to dissect away. Okay. So now once I clean from the artery in the vein, Stelio is gonna take again the obliterated umbilical going at 11 o'clock upwards. And then th those are the obdurator lymph nodes. Nerve is further down, we saw it earlier, and uh, you will see now by doing this. This is those are the vessels here and the nerve. The nerve is here, and the vessels are here. So we've seen it earlier. This is the obdurator foramen. So by having dissected this area and uh, removing the lymph nodes from the from the vessels and coming straight at the pectineus ligament here. You see, you remove this uh, lymph nodes as well. You see this lymph node? Those are all the obdurator lymph nodes and you find the nerve here straight from the top. Thank you, Stadia. And here again, you can do it by just hold it up there. Yeah, nice. Let me see here for a minute, good. Hold it there, there, that's fine. Very nice. And this is how we strip all the lymph nodes. Without any energy, without just by pulling once you find the right plane above the obturator nerve. Just hold it here to do some calculation. I have 
another five by five, please. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you now all again the anatomy. Another five by five. You can see the ureter, how nice it is. Just where Steus is uh, using his suction and uh, just hold it here. This is the ureter here, okay? Very nice there. Those are small capillaries, they're not bleeding a lot. So now, yep. I'm gonna use another, uh, thank you. Tonsil soap. Yeah. They have the... Um, also, take them. Uh, now we're gonna remove the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Bipolar. So now we're gonna do some uh, coagulation. We need eh? So we're gonna Say, say this again. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I don't uh, exactly understand the question, but uh, what I'm going to say is that uh, here is the internal iliac vein and the branches all here, which is our below, for example, the level of the obdurator nerve. And all the lymph nodes we need to remove are above this level. So even now here that I expose the internal, the branches of the internal iliac vein, uh, there was no need to. Uh, the best way to approach the artery in the vein is uh, what uh, a surgeon knows better and uh, as long as the, the surgeon is uh, safe with uh, his instruments and uh, the anatomical structures. Uh, so far, uh, this is uh, a way of, uh, this is uh, the way of, uh, my way of uh, a systematic approach. I have come across to some complications, but uh, in this, like uh, injury to the external iliac artery or vein, <coughs> but uh, never with this approach on the internal iliac vein. I have injured the in internal iliac vein, but not on this, uh, with this approach. So you can see all the pelvic muscles, the obturator nerve, and uh, uh, but again, I'm saying in surgery, as long as I, uh, someone knows exactly what uh, he or she are doing, this is the the best way to to do it. But I hope I answer to the questions. I'm not. Uh, I'm trying to understand it, but uh, yes, I hope uh, I answered it. 
So there is no splitting on this side. Same thing here. There is no kind of any bleeding, and you see any you see here the branches of the internal iliac. Just a little bit. The capsule and the capsule are here. Okay, very nice. Come on, Alexander. More capsule there. More capsule there. From above, from above. Here. Hold it here and pull them up. Good. Also give me this. We'll place those uh, lymphatics with uh, with the right side. I think uh, we're okay. And now we're going to stitch the vagina vault. Are you putting a drain or no? No, never. Why then? I don't think there is a, a reason to put a drain because the lymphatics, uh, the lymph nodes will uh, drain for a bit and then uh, the lymphatic, uh, the lymph <coughs> will be absorbed <laughs> eventually. Uh, may I have the, the stitch please? will be eventually absorbed. As long as you keep a, a drain, then the drain will uh, keep on draining. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's useful. So <coughs> maybe uh, another sector. Yeah, tell me. Is yes, a small vein injury can be managed by uh, first of all by <coughs> thank you for the question is uh, it's very important the first of all you can use a soap and just uh, press it a bit if it is a small injury and. Uh, if it is a small, let's start, if it is a small vein injury, then you can use the bipolar energy and coagulate it. If not, then we have to, we can put some, uh, we can apply some pressure with a soap. And uh, most of the time, this is uh, enough to stop any bleeding. If it is above two or three, uh, millimeters that doesn't stop then uh, either a stitch or some uh, agents like a uh, flow seal uh, or a surge cell can be applied and uh, usually it's it uh, it can stop any bleeding this is a vlog two zero stitch uh, it's a continuous bark with uh, stitch. I used it for the last uh, almost uh, seven, eight years, and uh, I didn't have any dehiscence from uh, that uh, stitch or any other. Uh, 
complication once there was a once there was a bleeding from the vaginal vault after a laparoscopic hysterectomy but not at the side of the of the stitch so we I did have to take a patient back to theater because of bleeding from the vaginal vault but it was uh, from the uterine artery here and not from the not from the vaginal vault Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, no, the peritoneum, no, but the mucosa of the vagina, I'm trying to ask the mucosa of the vagina. I will leave it like this. The it means the parietal peritoneum, yeah? Yeah, yeah no. Trying to do a full thickness stitch. This looks a lot as well. Here, yeah. This is why they remove it. I had the same feeling. There it is. From the middle part. I'm suturing. Uh, no. No. This is how I do the. I just stitch the vagina vault and I don't support it uh, apart from doing some stitches at the. At the um, the uterus sacral folds, I'm not doing anything else. Yeah. Yeah, very happy to show you the with the yeah. camera. Yeah, yeah. The port position. Okay. Let's clean the I have the bipolar place. Is the ostomy up here? Just a minute. The trick with this stitch is uh, 
not to leave any any of these credit uh, states exposed. Just a minute, Celia, just a minute, bipolar. And let me see the uterine artery. Okay. And as you can see, I was pulling the uh, angle of the vault to increase the. So the. This is the port. Those are the ports. This is the middle port, and this is uh, where I'm using the needle holder on the middle port. And this is the left and the right port on this side. Okay. Okay, I'm cutting now. Pass of your sexual. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We finished now. Thank you all, all uh, for watching, and all the team here for uh, just a minute. Wait, yeah. wait. Wait, wait. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for uh, your time to watch this video and the live transmission. Thank you, Dr. Pistofidis, for having me here, and the whole team here. We were. Uh, I think we did very, very well. I have some <coughs> suction, please, and bipolar. Just to rinse a bit. Mm. Now we can rinse. Well, I'd like to also thank the audience and the team here. They've done a fantastic procedure, very nice demonstration of anatomy uh, and the safety measures. Uh, we are very near to conclude our current fourth live uh, transmission. I just want to remind everyone that our next live transmission is going to be June the 8th, uh, when we are going to produce another interesting operation we have not planned, but in the next few weeks we're going to let you know who the surgeon is going to be, probably somebody international, and uh, also the type of surgery that he will perform. Wish you all the best, take care, and speak to you soon. Bye.